In this week's Fix the Photo, I'm going to look at fixing two different photos from our members' weekly challenges. This particular challenge was on eggs, and there are two photos in particular that I'm going to uh, make some adjustments to and hopefully improve. Uh, the two photos, one of them is by Alexandro Stelian Tumuta, and the other one is by Jaco Castari. Let's start off with Alexandru's picture. Let me just take that into full screen. Um, so the picture has quite a nice atmosphere to it, but there were a, a couple of things really that I thought uh, we could improve. The first one is compositionally, this candle over here on the left just really doesn't work for me at all. I don't understand it there. It, uh, it, it doesn't add anything to the shot. If anything, it actually takes away from the shot. The second thing is this highlight on the teapot is a little bit strong. So I've just reduced that highlight a tiny bit there. Uh, and then I've just taken that candle away. And I think you can see there by removing the candle altogether, it actually helps the composition. Uh, but if you like the candle, I thought the other option was to move it over to the other side. Um, but actually I prefer it without the candle altogether. And then finally, a slight improvement to this shot would just be to crop it in a little bit tighter, just to bring us in a little bit closer onto the main topic, which uh, was uh, the eggs. I'm not going to crop in the bottom because I like the way that sort of natural vignette frames the shot. Um, so that's kind of where I would like to take the shot. So it was from that, which I felt was very unbalanced and you didn't really know which way to look, uh, to that which gets us a little bit more concentrated in and a little bit more focused on the topic. On the next shot by Jaco Castari, there's a couple of things that I think we can do to improve on this image. It's quite a powerful, punchy, sort of Andy Warhol style pop art image, but I really didn't like this straight line shadow there. I don't know how that ended up in a straight line. Looks completely out of keeping with all of the other shadows from the eggs. And I'm not that keen on the base surface. It looks a bit grainy and a bit speckledy. And I think the color can also be improved, which would work better with the eggs. So very, very simply, let's go in. I'm just going to duplicate the layer. I'm gonna go into filter, liquify, and I'm just gonna bend that shadow round a little bit, make a few dents in it, make it a little bit more random because it just doesn't feel at all natural as it was. So just by adding a few contours and a few blips in there with the liquify tool, we can start to make that feel like it was more of a natural shadow. So that's the first thing. Next thing is I want to look at uh, this background. Now, because this background has got such a uh, unique color within the shot, it's going to be very easy to select. I can go select on color range and I can sample the color I want. I can add to that selection by clicking around the area. I don't want the shadows at this stage. I just want the main color and that pretty much gets me where I want with the color, I think. And then I can expand that selection a little bit if necessary, but I think it was actually okay. Say okay, and there is that color selected. Now at this stage, I'm actually going to save that selection. So I'm gonna say selection, save selection, call it eggs. And then from that selection there, I'm going to make a new layer, Command J, which gives me just the background there. Uh, but then I'm going to turn that layer off. I'm going to revert back to the layer, the duplicate layer. I'm going to load that selection again, eggs there. And I'm going to invert the selection. And then I'm going to make a new layer, Command J from that. So now I've got the eggs on a separate layer as well, along with their shadows. But um, first of all, let's 
have a look at dealing with this background. So I'm going to say filter blur Gaussian blur and just adding a 30, 34 pixel Gaussian blur. Now you see that Gaussian blur is blurred over the tops of the eggs, but that's okay because I can take the eggs layer that I created and put it back on top. And then that gives me um, the eggs nice and clean back on top. Now with that new blurred layer, it takes away some of the sort of horrible harshness of the grain of the paper that it was shot on. You may need to use a layer mask to clean up a little bit uh, around here and there, but that certainly creates more of a sort of graphic look to the image. But further to that, I think we can go in and we can deal with the color as well. Uh, now I'm just going to make a new merged layer just for ease here. I'm only doing these Photoshop adjustments very roughly and very quickly just so you can get an idea. But if we go in now to hue saturation adjustment layer and I sample the color of the purple and then I'm going to add a few extra pluses to select some of the other tones. This time though, I'm also going to select in the shadows as well because I'll want to shift the shadow color too. So I've selected that color of the image and now just by adjusting the hue, I can change the color to whatever I like. Now at the moment, it's a quite a vivid sort of purple, but I think if we make it go a little bit more towards blue, there we go, it's going to be a little bit more effective. And that's primarily because blue is the opposite color to yellow in the RGB uh, additive color model um, spectrum. So now that I've shifted that color to blue, let me just zoom out on it a little bit there, you can see the different feeling that the shot takes on. We can also play around with the saturation level if we want that less or more. And we can also, of course, play around with the lightness level of that color until we arrive somewhere that we think works quite well. If I flick that layer on and off there, you can see the original purple and there you can see it shifted to blue. Now, let me just merge that down, delete the other layers and then let's flick it on and off. So that's what we started with, with the grainy textured surface and the odd shadow. And then we finished with a fixed up version there. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fix the Photo. If you'd like to enter our weekly challenges, our critique shows, or our photography briefs, then head over to carltaylereducation.com. Thanks for watching.